Hello and welcome to Android Programming. Uh, this is a second year university module and as part of it we're going to be looking at how do we create a 2D game uh, within Android for the purpose of actually improving our programming skill. Uh, so for the, the module there'll be a series of different talks and lectures as we uh, to go through it. This is the first one is very much about actually introducing the module and, and defining the content of it and most importantly how I hope people will engage with it in terms of learning. There'll be a second introductory talk and this will talk more about the structure of the project and how it will be assessed. But for this one, we'll, we'll start off by really defining what the module aims to accomplish. What are the learning outcomes? Uh, and for this module, there is only really one significant learning outcome. It's a simple one. The module aims to improve your programming skills. That's the heart of the module. That's what it's about. That's what it wants to accomplish. How does it aim to go about doing that? Again, there's a reasonably straightforward and simple answer. We're going to develop, as mentioned, a 2D game running on Android. It'll be part of a large project. And the process of actually doing this, that will be the vehicle, the mechanism that we will use to improve our programming skill. Uh, for this module, there's no examination at the end. There's no assignments. It is simply based around the project. And the mark that you will get in the module will depend entirely upon your contribution, the quality of the code that you actually submit and contribute to the project. So we'll kick off a few things about me. You're going to see quite a lot of me in terms of the, the modules we go through. So I'll, I'll define a little bit about my approach to, to education. It'll become apparent, but might as well set it out here at the start. So first of all, Whenever we're together in lectures, I don't want to spend that time lecturing in the sense of just simply talking at you for, for an hour. I don't think that's a useful use of any of our, our, our time. So all of these videos are recorded. Uh, you can view them as many times as you want at your leisure. So when we're together in a lecture, we'll do activities. We'll look at code fragments. We'll dissect previous projects. We'll do some small exercises things like that, and we'll have the odd five or ten minute mini lecture if there's something important that we want to, to, to focus particularly on. I really do want to hear your thoughts, your opinions, the things you find challenging, the things you find easy. So my role is to try to structure things in a way that helps you learn. Uh, for if I'm to do that effectively, I need to understand what you get, what you don't get. So please do always feel free to let me know about how you're getting on. You'll see in lectures, or if you pop along to some of the advisories, um, that I like to ask questions. Uh, so I'll, I'll ask you a lot of questions. But generally speaking, I don't like questions that are right or wrong, true or false, yes or no. They're often not interesting questions. I'd much rather ask questions that are open-ended where you can have a position on something and you can talk about why you have that position on something. And if we get the views of a couple of people, we can get a feeling for the diversity, the range of different um, positions and views that people have on it. Friendly, probably you're calling this, but um, hopefully it's an assessment you've come to. In terms of some other things about me, utterly irrelevant to the module, but in some way define the type of person who I am. So I have a collection of Intel processors. You can probably just see them behind me up in the wall. Um, I, I grew up in the era of, of when home computers first came about. So in terms of your, your Commodore 64s, your Sinclair Spectrums, or in my case, the Oric 1, uh, so they, they, the first home computer I had. So I've always had a love of it since then. And, and you'll see old computing tech about my, my office. Um, I am a gamer. I was one of them. This was defining traits myself and a couple of hours each evening is just enough to, to keep me nice and happy and sane. And as a kid, in terms of what I wanted to be uh, growing up, uh, honestly, I wanted to be a mad scientist. That, that was my one aspiration in terms of, of a hill and a tar and lightning and things like that. So a computer scientist, that's probably close enough. Okay, as mentioned, like I say, you, you will get to me during the module. Now, we're going to look, before we get into the content of the module and breaking down the actual content, we're actually going to look at how we can approach learning on the module. And I think that's the right order in which to do things. 
anytime you register on a module or a course, you should always be asking yourself, what do I want to learn? Why do I want to learn this? And how am I going to learn it? And that's really, really important to, to establish that. So we'll look here at how I want to try to facilitate and structure learning on this particular module. And actually, in the very first lecture, we'll, we'll do a bit of an exercise where we'll think about how people learn. Uh, so what I'm doing here is, is teasing or, or, or taking out some of the conclusions of that. So when we think about the reasons why people learn, and I'm using people broadly here, so from toddlers all the way through to pensioners, I'm talking about how I learn and about how you learn. We have to be motivated to learn. If we're not motivated, uh, learning actually is incredibly difficult, and if you're forced to learn something that you're not really motivated to learning, the quality of the learning is remarkably inferior, uh, almost to the point where it's not that useful. So when we want to learn something, there's two reasons that get us motivated. And, and maybe you can boil it down really to one of two different reasons, or different variants of it. One reason is either that it's useful. So I can say, well, I want to learn how to do this, or I want to learn how to do this better, because if I can do that, I can then use this to do something else, and something else that I want to be able to do has a use. Alternatively, um, a lot of the learning that we do, we do because we enjoy it, we find it fun. So if there's a sport or an activity or a game or whatever um, that I enjoy doing, we'll put more time and effort into it, we'll try to do better at it, that's learning. Uh, so we can be motivated to do something because we fundamentally enjoy it as fun or that it's useful. And as mentioned, if you find yourself in the module and you're sitting thinking, this isn't fun, and I don't see why this is useful, then that's a dangerous situation to be in because you're learning, you will find it an uphill struggle and your learning probably will be compromised. In terms of how people learn, now this gets into biology and how we've evolved, how our brains are set up, but for us, um, quite often the most effective way we have of learning is to do the activity, to have a go at it. Maybe not doing it particularly well at the start, but by getting better through practice and iteration and that feedback loop that is established. So there's some truths about learning. And it's a reasonable question then to ask, given those truths, how have I tried to structure this module so that you will be doing something useful, something I hope you find fun, and you'll have lots of opportunity to do it in terms of the programming, which is the aim that we want to, to, to get out and improve programming. OK, so here's how we're doing it. In terms of the doing bit, simply, a uh, simple setup here, there is only the project. It's a large project. There's no exam, no assignments, just one large project. And as part of that large project, you will have ample opportunity to code. You'll need to do a lot of coding. That is the practice-based, the doing-based element of it. So the module set up to put you in a position where you will have to engage with a lot of programming. That's a good thing. That's the doing bit. In terms of the useful and fun, well, let's start off with the fun. So we're doing a game. That's not a bad type of program to create in terms of being fun. Now, there's a distinction here between playing it and creating it. But if you talk to people who actually create games, programmers, you'll very often hear them saying that actually creating, coding a game is a fun activity itself. So whenever you start getting the behaviour and the life of your game starting to emerge and you see it come together, that's a very rewarding, interesting, exciting um, experience. So a game's a good way to, to, to frame this. You'll see when we talk more about the project that you will have the freedom to determine the particular requirements of the game. It's your game, you'll have it within some defined region, but within that broad region you get to select the functionality and the features that you want to create. So I'll be encouraging everybody to do things that they think are interesting, that they think, oh that sounds interesting, I'd like to do that, that sounds like a fun feature. So I'm giving you the freedom, I hope, to make this game something that you will want to do, something that you will enjoy, something that you think is interesting, something that you think is fun. In terms of the usefulness of this, now you can take this, I suppose, on, on trust. Every single thing that we do will be of use and it will be most apparent whenever you go out in your sandwich year, your placement year. So that happens at the end of the second taught year. You're probably listening to this at the start of the second taught year. So you're going to have to sort of take my, you know, on, on faith that 
yes, the stuff that we are doing, whenever you get out into actual software development, is going to be of use within that environment. In fact, it'll also help you for your later modules too. Okay, now I've got a learning contract. A learning contract is, is set up saying that here are some things that I will promise to do and hopefully some things that you will promise to do in return. And the nice thing about the learning contract is that if we both adhere to it, we will stick to it, then in 99.9% .9 of cases we'll have a positive outcome in terms of people getting good decent marks on the module. So here's what you can expect of me. Um, I'm here to help. My role is to try to help you learn, to facilitate your learning. So as part of that, I'll always be supportive. I will not be judgmental. There is no such thing as a silly question. It doesn't exist. Um, so if you're not certain about something, if you're sitting thinking, I really should know this, uh, maybe we did it in first year, but I don't get it. Look, don't be worried about it. Come, talk to me. If we can get over that, then whatever's blocking you, then that lets you progress. So I'll, I'll always be supportive. I won't be judgmental. Uh, within lectures, as mentioned, I'm not going to stand up there and talk at you. We want to do more interactive things. Always very happy to answer questions within lectures. If something isn't clear, ask away. If you want to ask me a related question to it, ask away. And when the projects are handed in at the end, you'd expect nothing less of me or any other academic. All of the assessment will be fair, it'll be honest, it'll be consistent. And this is across teams and also for each member within each team. Uh, so we will do that properly uh, at that particular um, assessment point. So what am I asking of you in return? There's only two things. First one, you'll come along to the lectures and I'll be sending out videos, for example, each week. I'll be occasionally sending out things I would like you to look at, some demos. I'm assuming that in the majority of the, the, the stuff that's sent out, You'll, you'll find the time to go through the videos, to read the material, to explore the examples. There'll be some weeks you'll be busy with other modules and hand-ins and things like this, but most weeks you should be free to do that, and I'm assuming that's what you will do. Most importantly, you'll work consistently on the project. So this is a year three module. The project will run for 23 weeks. 24th week is going to be assessment. Now, if you work small number of hours each and every week on the project, it'll be a doddle. You will go through it, you'll build up a nice size project at the end, fantastic. If you, however, decide to take it easy at the start, and not to worry about the project until maybe six or seven weeks until it's due in, far too late. At that point, you'll discover that, oh, actually, the getting up to speed and writing of the project, there is quite a lot of work needed in that. You'll have to invest lots of time and effort. Um, it'll compromise your other modules. It'll compromise this module. It is not a position that you want to find yourself in. And again, in the project talk, we'll talk about how we try to uh, engineer things so students don't find themselves in that position. But anyway, learning contract. So I'm willing to do the top if you're willing to do the bottom. Uh, in terms of module content then, what will we actually explore in terms of the videos and some of the stuff within the lectures? Well, it breaks down into five different areas you can see I'm displaying here. We'll look at contemporary software development. We'll, and it's an Android uh, app we're doing, so we'll look at some Android development. We'll look at 2D games. And more in the second semester, we'll look at code quality, and code performance, and also user experience design. So to delve briefly into these, so when we're thinking about contemporary software development, that'll be in terms of, of coding techniques, it'll be in terms of testing techniques, it'll be in terms of agile and lean development techniques. And you'll be using an agile uh, process to actually create your project on over a number of sprints. And I'll be asking everybody to focus on a small number of agile and lean principles, but to do them well. Uh, if you do them well, it gives you a really nice foundation to build the more sophisticated agile and lean principles on top of that. So as mentioned, it is an Android app, so we have to learn something about Android. Android is massive, truly massive. We could spend the entire course and then a good bit more simply going through the APIs, looking at all the features that are available. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to focus on the bits of Android that we need to create a game. So in terms of a little bit about the, the, the app lifecycle, uh, how apps are created, put together, resources, getting input, getting output, that type of stuff. 
If you want to put in features that use some of the other things, you want to access the camera and pull stuff in or do network related materials, again, there's a load of stuff up there you can access and then incorporate into your project. But you'll, you'll do that in your own Steam. Likewise, it's a game. So we've got to look at a number of game related aspects. So in this case, we'll look at some architectures that games use. We'll look at graphics in terms of how do you display and transform images, do things like particle systems. We'll look at artificial intelligence, about how you give behavior and life to the entities within your game. We'll look at collision detection, collision response, and so on. The things that we need to bring a game to life. More in the second semester then, we'll, we'll, we'll delve into quote quality and quote performance. We'll have a look at how we can identify and what makes good quality code and how we can actually improve the quality of the code that we write. We'll have a look at performance and efficiency in terms of how do we write things that are fast, that are efficient. And then finally, again more in the second semester, we'll, we'll touch upon user experience design. It, it's a big area, it's almost, almost like a philosophy in terms of its approach is by putting the user of the software first and foremost in everything and not thinking about things from the developer's perspective but always from the user's perspective uh, and that, that's the right perspective to adopt so we'll, we'll look at different elements um, to that. Now you'll find more information on the course content and the learning approach, the learning contract a weekly breakdown of what we're going to be doing and also the project and things like this in the module handbook. It's about 20 odd pages long. Do download it from Queen's Online. Do go through it and, and, and keep the document to hand because it is a useful one that you'll want to refer to um, from time to time. I'll just highlight a few other things that are towards our, uh, are in the, 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 the module handbook. Uh, but in terms of recommended reading, there's a couple of textbooks that are recommended. Um, the third edition of the Beginning Android Game should be a good one, due early 2017. You, it's, it's worthwhile getting these because they are useful reads, but alongside those you will find a wealth of material online uh, in terms of either the Android uh, APIs and all of the examples that they've got set up for that, in terms of other sites doing tutorials, videos in YouTube, there's no shortage of things that you can tap into and actually access. In terms of lecture times, important dates. So for first semester, we're going with two lectures a week in terms of, of providing the, the material and, and a bit of the structure around the module. Uh, there'll be a drop-in advisory in one of the labs. Uh, you can see the times there. Each week, I'll be sending out some open office hours. You want to pop along to me to, to go through the project. Um, and it'll differ a bit from week to week, just depending when I'm free during that week. And you can see my office location up here. Six semester stuff, get them in the handbook. In terms of important dates, we'll look more at this when we uh, in the second introductory talk when we're breaking down what we're doing in the project. But just to highlight here in the first semester, uh, there's an early submission about getting into teams and submitting in the types of game you want to create. Uh, and then a more significant submission later on to check that all teams are getting up to speed. In the second semester, you're up to speed. You're working on each of the sprints that are delivering real features, I suppose, to your game. Um, up to week 11, it's submitted in. Week 12, there'll be some assessment activities on it. But as mentioned, you'll get more information on this in the handbook and more in the second introductory talk. So, I want to end this with pointing or directing you to another document that's available in Queen's Online, but this is a, another useful one. It contains advice from previous students who have gone through what you will be going through. So at the end of uh, each delivery of the module, I, I say to the students in the last lecture that, you know, have a think back, what went well, what didn't go well, if you were to do it again, what would you do differently? If you wanted to offer some words of wisdom to next year's cohorts, what would they be? So this document captures the words of wisdom from previous students. It's worthwhile going through this because they have provided this advice to you and you have an opportunity either to avail of the good advice they offer or to avoid some of the mistakes that they said that they, they, they were aware of and they would want to avoid again. It's very easy to go through the document, to read every single thing and think, yeah, that makes sense, it's all good. The difficult bit is not appreciating that it's good advice. The difficult bit is actually acting upon that advice and saying to yourself, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to act 
to make sure then that I am in alignment with that advice. So certainly please go through this, but think about how will it change, how is it going to set, how is it going to define your behaviour. Takeaways, um, three of them for this here. So aim of the module is to improve our programming skill. We'll do this through a large project. Uh, in terms of the details of the weekly content of the project, the assessment and all of that type of stuff is all in the module handbook, so do go through and have a read of that. Also have a look at the student-to-student -student advice um, in terms of what previous students have thought and how they are suggesting or advising you to take the project this year and to think about how you will be able to listen and adopt that particular advice. So as mentioned, there's a second introductory talk. It'll delve into the, the project. So I would suggest you, you go and you have a listen to that one next.